was about 10 years old, my mom's dad, so my grandpa on my mom's side, made us grandkids a wooden whistle out of a willow branch. And so for an hour, he stood there and whittled this whistle with a pocket knife. And at the end, there was a whistle, and I thought that was so cool that he had just done that. I was always a, a maker or a builder, so I was always tinkering with making things, little toy video cameras that we'd play with, um, things out of cardboard, all sorts of stuff. But when you're old enough to kind of use sharp things, it's exciting. And so I kind of made that leap into to woodworking. Did I hit you? Did you get me? I think so. <laughs> it got my arm. I always thought it'd be fun to invent a game where you put a bucket on the ground and try and land your wood chips in the in the bucket. <laughs> I do all sorts of different things when I'm making things out of wood, and I like it all. And so I'll work on something and I, I'll kind of get bored on it and do something else. I went through a long phase of doing cowboy figurines. And then I moved into chip carving. And you basically make little triangles. You put the knife in at an angle that you just learn to feel. And I'm gonna to try to get all my cuts to meet down at the bottom center of that triangle. There comes a triangle out. Chip carving is, uh, I kind of call it quilting on wood. And so you remove geometric patterns out of the wood. And I really went into a chip carving phase when I was probably just out of high school. I did that for a few years and finally took a class in chip carving. So I mostly self-taught with all this stuff. I, I didn't really have any wood carving classes to start with. So I was figuring things out on my own. And then you get going and it's like, oh, I don't want to quit. I want to finish. <laughs> when I got a job and got a house, I had a garage and a space for better tools. And I kind of went through this evolution where I started doing hand tool woodwork. And so I'd build boxes and dovetail things, but I loved hand tools and not so much power tools. I have plenty of power tools now but I really like hand tools. And it's something about the silence of it and the way the sharp steel can cut wood and shape wood that's just really fun and fascinating. When we were ready to have our first boy, I wanted to make him a baby rattle, but I didn't have a lathe and they're expensive and I didn't know if I'd really like using it. so I. I wanted to build one that you just power yourself. And I thought that was so cool that you could have a lathe that you could power yourself. And so I went to work a couple weekends and put this lathe together. And so I found a kind of a pattern online. It wasn't a complete pattern, so I had to fill in some of the gaps. It's really fun to use. I've got an electric lathe now, but I've forgotten how fun this thing is to use. And it just works by, you just pump it. a little bit like a bicycle, but you just pump it. Um, and uh, the faster you pump, obviously, the faster you can lathe, but... So this is a honey dipper I'm working on. And so you just get it going. I make spoons, I make little bird figurines that are called comfort birds, and people love comfort birds. And they're, they're designed to be comfortable to hold in the hand for people that are maybe going through painful medical treatments or something like that. I do all sorts of different things and, and I like it all and I'm looking for more things to do. Sometimes I think I do too much because I just focus on something and get good at it, but I just like trying all sorts of different things.
What inspires me as a woodworker is two things. The simplicity in woodworking. You can do lots of cool things with very simple tools. And there's just something about the way sharp steel shapes the wood that's just really rewarding. The second thing is just the beauty in wood. And I like wood as a material. And I'm not quite sure what it is about it, but it has structure inside and you sort of have to learn how to work with it or read it to know what piece of wood can do what or will cooperate with doing something. And so a lot of my pieces, the shape that I make it into is secondary to the prettiness of the wood inside. So this year is my first year being in the Meander Art Crawl. I've been wanting to do it for a number of years, but just couldn't figure out how to put the time into doing it. It's really given me the motivation to put more work into what I do and to find new things to do. And it's given me the motivation to come up with new designs and new ideas. Excellent job. Woodworking throughout my life has taken me on a journey from just a fun hobby thing to do to a, an escape from stress. As I've gone through my career, you kind of get more and more responsibility in your work and with that comes sometimes, oftentimes more and more stress. And so I found that in times when I've had more work or life stress, I've kind of dove more into woodworking or started a new kind of woodworking. So I've gotten more serious about it and, and oftentimes it's been an escape from something and it's a relaxation thing too. Anyone that has anything they like to do has that sensation of getting lost in a project um, and that's what woodworking has been for me. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 967cram.com.